Hey, welcome back to another episode of Razorback Reels. I'm Adam Roberts. And I'm Aaron Imsall. We missed you for a couple of weeks, but while you were busy having fun on spring break, we were hard at work That's reviewing right. movies for you. It's hard, but somebody's <laughs> got to do it. Hey, so we have lots of reviews coming up for you next. All right, welcome back. We have a little bit more than half a dozen new releases, so let's just get right into them. First off, 12 Rounds with John Cena. Molly, get out of the house! She's not dead. It's a game. The only way to keep her alive, you do exactly what I say when I say it. If you are still standing after all 12 rounds, you'll have won her back. I'm gonna hunt you down and I'm gonna kill you. I look forward to that. Guy breaks out of prison, FBI knows about it, nobody tells me! In 15 minutes, I will be calling a cell phone located on the 18th floor of the hotel. All right, WWE Presents brings us 12 rounds starring John Cena, uh, the big wrestling superstar. And uh, this isn't The Rock or Dwayne Johnson or Stone Cold Steve Austin, it's John Cena. And this is his second movie after The Marine. And you know what? It's a slightly hair better than The Marine. So what do you know? Baby steps. We're taking baby steps here. But John Cena uh, plays this cop who takes down this ruthless terrorist who's like the wor worst than Osama bin Laden the way this movie tries to make it even though he's like really wimpy but uh anyways he takes him down and there's an accident that happens and now that terrorist wants to get revenge and John Cena's got to go through 12 rounds of horrifying things in order to save his life and his girlfriend and blah 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 and uh anyways this movie's pretty ridiculous it's the perfect movie for Steven Seagal in 1993 I think he would have done great in this the fat man the ponytail so, uh, I don't know. Is John Cena getting better than the Marine? Yeah, I mean, slowly, slowly maybe he's getting better. But this movie's just whimsical, nonsensical action stuff. You're like, huh, really? What? Really? Really? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I stopped watching wrestling when the New World Order kind of went out of business. So, I really didn't know who he was. But John Cena was the best actor in this entire movie. And Agreed. Seeing that he's coming from WWE, that should, it just tells you how pathetic this movie was. The best part of the movie was the part that was in the trailer when his house blows up, because I didn't see that coming. The rest of the movie was just kind of blah. Now, you know, this is sort of film, you know, we feel it had Steven Seagal, you just say, okay. Jean-Claude Van Damme yeah, would be great. Yeah, let's just turn the brain off, let's just watch some awesome action scenes. But it didn't really have any awesome action scenes. I mean, most of it was pretty nonsensical. I mean, I'm, one part they're like gonna drive a car into a power generator to <laughs> stop a train instead of maybe just parking the train in, or the car in front of the train or something. I don't know, it just didn't make a lot of sense. I was never pumped up. I actually almost fell asleep in this. And for, for a fast, film, yeah, yeah this, for a fast cutting action movie, you should not be falling asleep. Maybe you don't like it, but you should at least be awake. And Come on, engaged. Adam. This is the director that brought a speed and die yeah. hard. Come on, this is Rennie Harlan. It's like, like we were saying, yeah. if, the, if the guy hasn't directed a movie, from 20 years and won the referencing from the director of Die Hard or director of Speed. Yeah. That's a bad sign. So what you saw when George Lucas came back after you from know, the director like of Howard the Duck. Hi yeah. like, oh, 20 year wait, wait. hiatus. It, yeah, it doesn't work. I mean, he has done stuff, but none of it's really worth mentioning. And I think he'd be glad if we didn't mention. Yeah. If you like his brainless, if you like brainless action movies, you know, you might like this. And you know, if you're if you're I a big John you know. Cena fan. Maybe you'll like I, this as well. I think that's the only way that you'll like this movie. Is he has moments just, of charisma. Right. If you like this guy, then you'll like this movie because it's really just a vehicle for him to run around yeah. doing mindless things. Well, yeah. we have to wait till hey. the next WWE Presents movie. Yeah, we'll maybe, maybe if they get, like you said, if they get progressively better each time, yeah. then 20 years from now, we might be up to a C. That's right. Yeah. So here's well, the future. Well, Duplicity is a movie I saw and I really enjoyed it. Let's go ahead and roll the trailer. To do to get 40 million dollars. I took a job in counterintelligence for Brooke and Randall. You're about to make a move. Some new product. Something big. The very existence of this product must be carefully protected. My God, he is gonna crush me. It's a total corporate death match. The competition will do anything to get their hands on this. Guess who they like for director of Intel Operations? Tony Gilroy directs Duplicity, sort of an espionage, light, romantic-ish comedy with Clive Owen and Julia Roberts. And I really enjoyed this. Tony Gilroy, of course, uh, 
was the writer and director of Michael Clayton. He uh, helped write the Bourne movies. And so he's taking a turn for more of a comedic feel. This isn't like a laugh out loud movie, but it's, you know, a fun movie. Clive Owen is also somebody else who hasn't done a whole lot of comedies. We saw him in Shoot 'em Up. And I think he really shines in this. He is so charismatic. I thought he was channeling Rock Hudson from, you know, Lover Come Back or Pillow Talk. The plot itself, of course, is pretty similar to Lover Come Back. I hope that doesn't spoil the ending for you. And this is, you know, it's by Tony Gilroy, so you have so many twists and turns and complications. Duplicity is a movie that you have to pay close attention to so you know what's going on. But I really enjoyed this. This is, I mean, all the new releases that have come out over the month of March, this is probably the date movie. This is the one to take your date on. I really enjoyed Duplicity. Yeah, I gave it a B minus. It's not a terrific film, but for the month of March, it's really good. Yeah, I'm disappointed that I didn't get a chance to see it. I really wanted to see this. Uh, unfortunately, didn't get a chance to go out and see it. Uh, Tony Gilroy, I liked Michael Clayton, right. so and I like. I was a big fan of those Dorothy Day Rock sort of, Hudson movies as well. Yeah, so I would. I think I really like this, and I'm hoping to catch it, it on DVD. It's a think of Michael Clayton only lighthearted instead yeah. of anguish. So. Yeah, so I'll, I'll definitely catch this on DVD. It looks like it's worth it. All right. Well, The Hunting in Connecticut is one you should be glad you missed. Mm. Right. Come back. Help me. The Haunting in Connecticut, which is based on a true story in sort of the same way that oh, Star really? Wars is. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, pretty much your standard uh, haunted house ghost story. And it's just really disappointing. It sets it up so you're not really sure for the first hour of the movie over whether these are real hauntings or hallucinations. But since it's a horror movie, you know that they're real hauntings. We don't need this setup anymore. And I, you know, if it has a nice plot and a nice ambience, I enjoy a horror movie, but this one didn't. All it was is about every minute to a minute and a half, you would have a scary shadow appear on the side of a screen and on the side of the screen and music it really loud for about four seconds, and then everything would go back to normal again. It did that over and over and over again. I should have brought in a little tally pad to count the number of cheap surprise and then normal surprise, normal times it did it in the first hour of the movie. I would have gotten, you know, like at least a hundred. It was really I mean, if you enjoy that sort of movie, you're going to enjoy this. I have talked to people who thought it was really scary and who really liked it. So I think if that's your taste, if you like the shock, jump out and say boo sort of movie, you like The Hunting in Connecticut. If you, you know, want a horror movie that scares you more about the actual ghost or the actual theme of the movie, then definitely skip it. Yeah, it seems like this movie was all about mood and atmosphere opposed to actual building up a scary story. I thought the trailer yeah. was kind of freaky the, tra the first time I saw it. The trailer scared me. The trailer yeah. scared me. So It gave me like an Amityville horror feel yeah. to it, but maybe without the substance behind yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, this is exactly Amityville horror type of movie. I think these were all based around the same writer went around embellishing people's testimonies. But, yeah. you know, I mean, I do want to give credit, credit to the trailer, though. They didn't put the last part of the movie in there. Finally. Like the last like, six or seven horror movies we Thank reviewed goodness. have. And so I did appreciate that, thank you. And that's really the only good thing I have to say. You had Virginia Madsen in here, uh, Oscar nominated at least actress, Sideways. And yeah. uh, Amanda Crew, who I liked in her stuff so far. She I like the main, the main kid yeah. from the movie. He was in the, the TV show he's The Shield. These, yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's in the TV show The Shield. He played a, a kid serial really killer, like and he was really good in The Shield, yeah, so I don't know. He's a big CW star, but yeah, uh, yeah uh, don't rent this unless you like that type of movie. So. Yeah, who am I to judge? But I Love You Man is one that I think everybody will like. Thing though, like Peter's always been a girlfriend guy. All his dude friends just fell by the wayside. Why is it weird that I had girlfriends? Nothing, we're just saying you never really had a best friend is all. Well, who's your best friend? Your brother, Robbie. What's up? He's about the coolest guy I know. So what do I do? How do I meet friends? If you see a cool looking guy, strike up a conversation and ask him on a mandate. Okay, you know what I mean? No. Casual lunch or after work drinks. You're not taking these boys to see The Devil Wears Prada. Oh, God, I love that movie. No. All right, there's I Love You, Man. Uh, the, the clip there kind of kind of wraps up exactly what the movie's about. It's about a dude that's getting married and he spent so much time in his relationship. Now he has nobody to be his best man and he has no friends, really. So he courts Jason Siegel and 
they become really good buds and he kind of learns what it's like to have a really close friendship. And Adam called uh, Duplicity the best date movie of the year so far. I would say I Love You Man is the best date movie of the year so this far. This is a mandate movie. Yeah, well, right. I, not just a mandate movie. I think there's also some... I took my mandate here. I know that you just brought your wife. I brought so, my wife, yeah. Heather, uh, yeah. for this, and we both really enjoyed this movie. Uh, has Rashida Jones, who plays his fiance, who I thought was really good in this movie, and she's... A lot of all the Office fans know who she is, but outside of that, I don't think very many people really know who I she thought, is. I thought, yeah, I thought she was terrific in this. I don't remember the name of it, but she's slated to star in her own romantic comedy coming up, and so I'm really excited. I, and, I and love. She's also going to be in Parks and Recreations, the that's new right, the new Office right. spinoff, kind of with the writer show. April six. Yeah, but yeah. I thought the supporting cast in this movie was really good. I, there's a lot of you know uh, cable lists comedians in this movie that played in the supporting roles, and for the most part, I thought most of them were good. There was a few of them that were a little annoying. Uh, high pitch guy, voice guy. Yeah. He's a, he's not a favorite around the studio here, around UATV <laughs> not studio. Not sure why he was here. Yeah. But uh, uh, thank, uh, thank you, Bailey Boyd, for getting yeah. that out of the trailer. She gave us the they scoop. Bailey gave yeah. us the scoop Dream on that one. Shows you, but, <laughs> but I really like this movie, Adam. I, th I thought it, it hit in the right, you know, the romantic notes. I thought it hit well. The, the comedy wasn't like some of the more uh, gross and you know it wasn't, explicit it didn't like have we've a seen. A lot of gross out stuff in it. You know, return the yeah. favor was was uh, yeah. the course the the big thing. This, a lot of people have been from. This was another one where it's just so many awkward scenes. You know, some of my friends uh, came out. They said it was some of the scenes were so awkward I couldn't even laugh. But I love that sort of yeah, humor. Yeah, me too. Where it's just like you're just sitting there imagining it in a real situation, just how you would just cringe and hope it'd be over. Yeah. But on screen, it's hilarious. Uh, Jason Segel is great in this. He plays this role to perfection. It could have been a really flat role. He did a great job. Paul Rudd, of course, is Paul Rudd. So yeah, Paul Rudd pretty much plays who he is in a lot of role <laughs> movies. But Jason Segel's not the forgetting Sarah Marshall character. He's no, a little he's bit. Not. He's a little more rougher. A little more, you know. He not doesn't as, cry. Yeah. He, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. This something about this movie. Not great. It's probably not yeah. going to be in the top ten list at the end of the year. Yeah, there's so many. There's so many quotable lines. Yeah. And yeah. This is a great one for They're DVD the to watch. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, their affinity for Rush is uh, yeah is really terrific. I don't know. I would maybe throw it. In in the same category as like role models or something. Uh, yeah, yeah. This it's is, in that kind of same realm, yeah, I would say. If you're looking for a DVD to buy to just, you know, hang out with your friends, you should get this one. Yeah, it comes out. it's great, great choice. Well, there'll be lots more reviews. Of course, Monsters vs. Aliens came out by DreamWorks. What is DreamWorks' highest grossing movie? Not Pixar, DreamWorks. Think about it. And DreamWorks' top grossing movie of all time, Shrek 2. Of course. Not a big surprise. Easy one. Yeah. Easy one. I hope you got it. If you didn't, you should feel pretty bad. But hey, after Shrek, it was pretty much downhill from DreamWorks. Kung Fu Panda was good. Kung Fu Panda? Like Kung Come Fu on. Panda. You, you're on a crusade to just destroy Kung Fu Panda in comparison like, to Wally. In comparison to Wally. You just want to slander it just so you can make Wally look better, that's I think. Not even, like that's slander, not even true at all. Like slander the panda that's in like, favor of Wally. That, yeah, that's like me saying Scotty Pippen's not as good as Jordan. Everybody knows it, and we still love Scotty Pippen, but. Yeah, well, whatever. Yeah. All right, it's still a yeah, still point of contention here. But uh, knowing <laughs> is, uh, let's go ahead and play part of the trailer for that, and then we'll tell you what we thought. What are you doing with this? You weren't supposed to bring this home. It belongs to the school. But maybe it means something. Like a math puzzle or something. Stay with me. I know how this sounds. But I've matched these numbers to the dates of every major global disaster for the last 50 years in perfect sequence. Earthquakes, fires, tsunamis. The next number on the chain predicts that tomorrow, Somewhere on the planet, 81 people are going to die. All right, you got Alex Proas' new movie, Knowing. Uh, of course, he did The Crow, Dark City, iRobot. He's done a lot of sci-fi uh, flavored movies. And this is one in includes the mini hair weaved Nicolas Cage. Uh, he's back with another great hair weave in this one. And he's back with some great wooden acting <laughs> over the top stuff going on here and also stars Rose Byrne who I thought was a little I liked her but didn't wasn't that I great either her. but besides the acting in this movie they're actually able to pull off I think an interesting story that revolves around this kind of metaphysical uh, theological kind of sci-fi scenario apocalyptic about the list like you saw in the clip there and you know what a lot of people hated this movie it's been out now a couple weeks now and it's been getting the wrath of the critics, but not necessarily the goer because it's done movie goer because it's done pretty well at the box office. Right, it was number one when it was released. Yeah, and, you know, I 
uh, this based on the trailer, you think you might know what sort of movie it is, but you don't. Yeah, it takes yeah. a whole different direction. I really, when you're not expecting I was really it. like, wow, this is not what I expected going in at all. And you know, like Aaron said, the critics have not really liked this at all. I don't remember what the Rotten Tomato score is, but it's really low. Roger Ebert gave it a full full four stars out of four, and we both enjoyed it. So I don't know, maybe just some of us got it, and some of us didn't. But yeah, know. and we can't. It's hard to really to tell you what it's about without giving yeah, away. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Of I mean, how you to saw the list, it. you saw the number list in there, and you can probably figure out that it has something to do with natural disasters. The number list, but we don't want to give too much more away besides yeah. that. And I wasn't blown away by the plot twist or anything. Like I thought. Uh, you know, especially the biggest plot twist that they had was really cliche, like I'd seen it on yeah. the Twilight Zone, you know, at sure. least a dozen times. But, and so if I pretend that two minutes didn't exist, I thought it was a really, really interesting story. And, uh, you know, I saw a screening of it. I walked out with uh, one of my friends and we were debating over whether, uh, oh boy, how do, you know, these people were, you know, like natural or supernatural or what, how exactly you define all that. And so it's something that I think is intended to be especially thought-provoking, uh, you know, coming from Alex Proyas. I don't think it, he pulled it off as well as he wanted to, but I thought it was a good, you know, a good mold of a popcorn flick with a, you know, metaphysical drama. Yeah, and if you've seen Dark City, I think you'll yeah. maybe recognize a lot of kind of similarities between the whole way Dark City unfolds and this movie unfolds about... You know, where Dark City, you kind of don't know what, what is, what's real and what's exactly, not real. Exactly. And that's kind of what this movie deals with, like what's real, what's not real, you know. And, of course, the ending's got a, you, a debatable ending as well. You kind of don't know exactly what happens. But you know what? If you like Nicolas Cage, which he's, I think, a love him or hate him kind of actor. Yeah. <laughs> I think you can still survive this movie without we loving are, Nicolas Cage. We are not Nicolas Cage fans. I'm kind of in the middle. I, I, I'm kind of in the middle with him. I, I hate Nicolas Cage. I, even though you yeah. sometimes look like Nicolas Cage, yeah. you hate it's Nicolas Cage. I hate Nicolas Cage, but I gave this movie a B. So yeah. I, I think yeah, he's, Cage is very jealous of me, and so I think that's where that it That could possibly be it. I give it a yeah. B minus. Maybe I'm just a sliver below Adam here. But I think this movie's interesting enough. And, you know, I don't know. So many people hate it. You may hate it. But if yeah. you trust our opinion on sci-fi movies, that there's some interesting stories to tell, I think you can give this movie a chance. Right, yeah, definitely go see it, especially if you like, like you said, like sci-fi. Yeah, movie. Dark City. If you like yeah. that movie, I think there you can you maybe get there something out of this. All right, well, let's move on. I think it was like Signs. If you like Signs... Yeah, that too. If you like Signs, you'll love this movie. Dark City meets yeah. Signs. I thought that this was the same idea as Signs, only better. That's, interesting. That's how to describe it. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, uh, The Last House on the Left, not like Signs. Let's no. play the trailer. <laughs> The girls, Justin. Bring her back! You got her. Now what? I saw a house back there. It's about our car trouble. We're actually pretty lucky today, seeing your house. There's only one problem. Our daughter won't have the car back till tomorrow morning. You know, you should probably just sleep here tonight. We have a guest house. All right, Last House on the Left. It's a remake of an older horror film, but I didn't really need to say that because you can pretty much just assume <laughs> yeah. that when you see a horror movie that it's a remake of another horror movie. Or a movie. ripoff, one of the Yeah, other. usually both. But this is you know, originally by Wes Craven. It, uh, I mean, I haven't seen the original. Apparently it did have a big impact on the horror genre. This one, not going to have any impact on really anybody. It, was, it wasn't a very enjoyable movie. It wasn't really interesting. It was just kind of long periods of nothing followed up by some torture and it wasn't really i mean it wasn't like saw or anything it wasn't torture porn but it was just kind of mostly bland i think was the biggest problem i had well i think maybe the only thing you might remember to it is it might scar you permanently because there's some disturbing scenes in That's this movie true. there's That's a true. disturbing rape scene in this movie there's some some kind of some gory torture violence in this movie at times. It, it, it borders definitely on torture porn, I would say. And I'm not going to go all well, Ben well, Lyons on you. That, yeah. I'm not going to go all <laughs> Ben Lyons on you and say, this is despicable, this isn't even art or anything. You know, it's got some creepy moments in it. There's a few creepy moments in this movie where you'll, you're like, oh, you know, you've seen it before, like Adam said. Yeah. You know, these, these scary dudes come in. It's like the strangers, so to speak, only not as, not as much suspense, where it's kind of more laid out for you. Strangers a lot better. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Strangers a lot better. But there's a few kind of creepy things. The guys are really creepy. Like The Devil's Rejects had some great creepy people in this. Unfortunately, the movie's a million times better in, <laughs> as far as telling the story of the plot. This is just kind of, I'll slap them together. Yeah. You know, if you're scared about people breaking into your house and or going out on camping trips and stuff like this, this could freak you out. And it definitely will scar you with some of its really disturbing yeah. scenes. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, I don't like to criticize 
you know, kid for watching rated R movies because, hey, I used to sneak into them. But there was like a five-year-old kid and his sister in the that's very back. That's way too young. Uh, that is way, no, that's, yeah. Way too young, Yeah, man. way too young. Uh, yeah, that'll scar you. But, uh, yeah, don't, don't take your kids to see yeah, this. Don't take your five-year-old. No. Stick to like 16. Because you, you know, won't be able to. 15. Yeah, you won't be able to explain what happened. And if you try to, it'll just, no, you don't want it. Yeah. yeah, not a whole lot to say about this movie. Yeah, and so it is you, what it is. Yeah, while you're watching this, you can send your kids to see Monsters vs. Aliens in 3D <laughs> or 2D. <laughs> President, Mr. President, we have a situation. Once again, a UFO has landed in America. The only country UFOs ever seem to land in. <sighs> Humans of Earth. My quest has led me to your planet. Give it to me now! You should in no way take any of this personally. It's just business. Galaxar out. Somebody think of something and think of it fast. All right, Monsters vs. Aliens. It's got an all-star voice cast in this. Uh, Reese Witherspoon, Seth Rogen, Stephen Colbert, uh, Kiefer Sutherland, uh, a whole bunch of people. Uh, and, you know, it's... The, the clip there in the title pretty much tells you what this movie's about. They bring in some monsters <laughs> to take on some aliens, and the, and the whole country's in a panic, and it parodies, like DreamWorks likes to do, it parodies a lot of past movies. Uh, you see a little bit of the attack of the 50-foot woman. You see some... Uh, Dr. Strange Dr. Love Strange loves in there, and a lot of just little, little hints of a lot of 50, you know, 50s classics uh, that they had, like Mothra and a stuff blob. like that. <laughs> yeah, the swamp thing or whatever. Yeah, and so they got all these monsters, and... I think the biggest problem with this movie, now it's in 3D, I saw it in 3D, I don't think Adam, no, I Adam saw it didn't, in 2D, right. is I don't think this movie was necessarily needed to be 3D. Now it comes with you with a couple, you know, nice 3D gags, so if you haven't seen a 3D movie, like my little son Bronson, he had never seen this, this was his first 3D movie, he enjoyed like when he thought the, the ball was flying in his face, and he's like, hey dad, there's things inside the theater right now, and you know, that was really cute for me as a father, but you know, outside as a movie goer, I'm like, huh, what's really the point, I'd rather just yeah. spend the save the extra two dollars per person not seen in 3D because I think it would have been more relevant. The story is not here, the humor isn't here, and ultimately you're left with just a visually stunning film with very little backbone to it. Now I did enjoy the Bob character as yeah. seen up there, uh, voiced by Seth Rogen, yeah, who yeah. is <laughs> plays the Seth Rogen voice, the Seth Rogen laugh. The <laughs> Pretty much is Seth Rogen. Laugh, right? and that, of course that was a horrible uh, Seth Rogen can, laugh. The difference the, between a, you know, a Pixar movie and a DreamWorks movie is that in a Pixar movie, the writers are the highest paid people working. In a DreamWorks movie, they're the least paid yeah, people the writing working. really yeah. suffered. The writing, really. not good. They have this you know, celebrity cast, you know, Stephen Colbert. You know, of course, uh, Rain Wilson from The Office we were talking about. Hugh Lowry from them. House. Yeah, Will Arnett, Paul, Paul Rudd's even in here. But the writing, I mean, I, I thought it was funny. Obviously, I liked it a lot, you know, quite a bit better than Aaron did. I was laughing through most of it. I think it's, you know, a really just cute, light popcorn movie that you'll forget about the very next day. Well, exa yeah, yeah, exactly. I think the laughs aren't laughs that you'll remember. Like, you probably couldn't remember, like, one funny yeah, thing I'm said. I'm trying to come up with, like, a catchphrase for <laughs> the you movie can't. to remember, but... It's yeah. really, like, simplistic humor I thought this. I mean, Very simplistic Okay, there was humor. one part that I thought was really great when you have the, the two buttons on the side, you know, yeah. That was more yeah. of a gag, side I like gag that. thing. I, li though. I like that. That was, that, yeah. was cool. yeah. I Stephen mean, Colbert playing Axel Foley, Axel F. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. That yeah. was kind of funny. Yeah, but there were some funny parts. Was, they're, they're, all, they're all disposable gags. It's, you know, yeah. this movie two years from now isn't going to be as funny because people have forgotten so many of the cultural references that they brought up. And, I mean, Shrek, I think, did it the best that they're ever going to do where you mold, you know, your traditional, you know, your animated story with you know, all your crazy pop culture references and everything. Eddie Murphy is the donkey. But they tried to replicate that, and it just isn't working anymore. So they need to focus much more on the story and character. Yeah, and I think kids, maybe young like kids, Kung Fu will Panda, like this. That was the strength with Kung Fu Panda. You had a real story and great characters. Yeah, and I think this ultimately, like you said, where this falls apart. I think maybe young kids will like this because it's, oh, it's yeah. visually cool. There's I mean, some, it's fun to watch. Action, but there's a lot of characters, like yeah, we talked about fun. before, that are unnecessary almost. Yeah. Like they just kind of threw these characters in. Yeah. But I'm uh, not bashing on it. I liked it. Go see it. But C plus. Hey, C's great. a good grade, like <laughs> yeah. we say. 
And but apparently uh, James Bond does not like wow. it. So yeah. I think Aliens versus James Bond. I think 007 has spoken. <laughs> uh, maybe this is only a Maybe C+ he just movie. ran off to see so. it as soon as we told him. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so I don't know. Right. There's Monsters vs. Aliens for you. Bond does not approve. I give it a C, which is a good grade, like yeah. we said. But uh, coming up next week, we do have a couple movies. We of have course, Dr. Fast and Dr. Furious movie, Fast right. and Furious. We have, of course, Adventureland with, with uh, Kristen Stewart, as we all know her, the chick from Twilight. And uh, Fast and Furious, the fourth iteration of the formula you may remember a couple of weeks ago. I'm looking forward to both those movies, actually. Yeah, I got high expectations on each of them. Adventureland so. especially looks funny. But I agree. thank you, AMC Fiesta Square, $4 movies on weeknights and $4 movies during the morning and early afternoon on weekends. Uh, thanks so much. Make sure you go to RazorbackReels.com and, of course, UATV.UART.edu. Uh, see you next Monday. I'm Adam Roberts. We'll see you. I'm Aaron Emsall.